Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hello, children. This is gonna be... This was not an easy one. And the more of I thought of it, the more I figured I'd just wing it because uh, I didn't want to make it too much of a, of a lecture or speech. Uh, <clears throat> but then also, there's no real way to just... This is not robotic. This is uh, true human stuff. So I figure I'll, I'll just uh, ramble on and we'll inevitably maybe get a point or a lesson or a little bit of moral of the story in there somewhere. Guten Tag, Aaron. In a video, you once mentioned that your college experience was the second lowest time in your life. The other low point, I believe, was when you were struggling to get a good job or becoming disillusioned with the working world. It is the same time frame where you mentioned you had been drinking heavily and worked out and ran an insane amount. Ironically, I didn't drink at all then. That's how down and depressed I was. I was so down and depressed that I didn't drink. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's when you really, like when you don't even want to have sex, that's how bad it was. A girl could have shown up at my place with a bottle of booze and some frilly lingerie with huge cans, and I would have been like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm not. I mean, it, it, it was that bad. Um, yeah, so if, if it's so, and I bet you some of you have been there, I can almost guarantee you every man will be there at least once in his life, where it is so bad, you don't even want to drink. That's how bad it can get. Uh, since you've already covered most problems young men face like me, let us uncover the missing piece of Aaron Cleary history. Well, there's a lot more pieces missing than you realize. I want you to go into detail describing the insanity, despair, and confusion, and the way out so as <clears throat> so we as your audience can gain appreciation of not having to go through it, and perhaps appreciate our situation more. Feel free to put this concept into reality how you see fit. All right. Um... Well, I guess we should give you the background as to what the worst part of my life was. Uh, and it was a confluence of really shitty things all happening at the same time. And not only major things, like little petty shit. I got like three rolling stop tickets from the Minneapolis Police Department. And by the way, fuck the Minneapolis Police Department. And I'm not, everyone says, oh, I wasn't going there. I mean, literally, it was, I stopped, I went, they just wanted to give you a ticket. Um, petty shit like that was, I mean, it was, it made me believe there was a God and he was a complete prick because the amount of bad luck, both in major bad things happening in my life, medium bad things, and minor bad things, it was like, this has to be conscious. This has to be a test or just somebody getting their kicks up in the clouds in the sky. Um, and, uh, it was just bad. But the main things that were happening, one, uh... I, uh, it was really getting to the point where it's like, holy shit, I'm never going to find a job. What did I do just wasting my time? Not only the four years going to school, but the amount that I busted my ass off, uh, the years that I had spent trying to find a job. Why did I work so hard? I think men, I think pretty much everyone has that, uh, given how much you've been lied to by your parents and teachers and guys counselors about <clears throat> what your degree should be and you know any degree, degree is a good degree and then the the expectations uh, because when you when you go to college you're a good student you're gonna get straight A's or near straight A's and your trajectory in life looks like this and especially you came from poverty you didn't have money kind of like me like then once college was done then you'd finally be free then you'd finally reach the promised land. And this is going from like when you're a little three-year-old kid and like, shit, this sucks not having money. Uh, <clears throat> funny, a little three-year-old has an acute awareness of what money was and is, and he really wanted it. Uh, and so you finally think like this, quarter century hell is over and you realize, oh shit, it's not. And so whereas you thought your trajectory was gonna go like that, you realize it was this. And that was, crippling unto itself. There was uh, the standard old classic girl that got away because I was just trying to get by, just trying to make money. I was dating a very, very nice, sweet girl. Wasn't the smartest, uh, but she was a very nice, sweet girl. And I wasn't ready uh, to get married or commit. 
I frankly wanted to bang other gals and uh, I had no fun. There was no fun. Like, everybody else had mom and dad pay their way through college. She was actually quite a privileged individual. Um, and it was like top parties and this and that. And I'm like, I never got that. I never, I didn't get to travel. I didn't get to travel. Uh, and I wanted to have my fun. I wanted, I wanted childhood. I wanted to have a little bit. I wanted the, the partying and the college experience, not fucking working insane hours and studying on top of it. And by the time I'd fucked that one up, she was long gone, ran off with some other guy. And that was the next major blow. Where I was like, oh fuck. And, and I doubt she's listening, but not to besmirch her, but it's like, and then I dated a couple girls too. I'm like, shit, that was the best you could get. I mean, that was the best I could probably get. <laughs> and I had delusional expectations. You know, you guys know my, my checklist. Heels, lingerie, make me a sandwich, support yourself, da da da. Don't give me no fucking lip. There ain't a girl in the world like that exists. But this one came about as close to it as you're going to get. And it was, I didn't realize that until it was too late. And that was another major blow. Um, the third major blow uh, was, I, don't, I know this is going to sound like three or four things, but it's all wrapped into one, but it's the environment that I was in. Minnesota is cold. I was working security. I was sleep deprived, still working nighttime shifts. <clears throat> uh, the politics of how they just, Minnesota, People really do hate white males who are conservative, or, or not leftist, let's just say. I mean, they really hate you. They, they're they racist and they are sexist. Even the white people themselves are here because they got a virtue signal. And there was just no fucking support from society, the environment that I was in. Um, you couldn't get a job unless you sucked some Cargill person's dick. So either I needed to be in the Prissy Lily White suburbs network, like you had to come from a suburb that begins with a vowel. Everybody look at a map of the Twin Cities, you'll see all the suburbs start with vowels, especially the rich ones, like the EP and the Edina. Although Wyzeze, Wyzeta, that does not start with a vowel. So you need to belong to that, or you had to not be a white male. Uh, and then you'd have the communists uh, over in the Twin Cities and the university system and all that kind of take care of it. Oh, we got this, we got this, bro. Um, and then just the, the psychological wear and tear of, of winter. It was just it, no man or woman should go through that shit. Never. And so when it when you make the realization that your life is going to be Nowhere near what you were promised. You did exactly what you were told. This is, this is where I'll, I'll sympathize with the millennials a little bit because we got sold, sold the same line of bullshit. There is no meritocracy. Corporate America, not even big corporate, just regular employers are all a bunch of cocksucking motherfucking piece of shit scum that for all, especially in banking, should all be dragged out in the street and shot. Uh, and I'll volunteer. You make it legal to be a banker hunter. I will. I will lead the team. I will design. I will handpick my crew. And like the Israelis had the Nazi hunters, Cappy will be the banker hunter. And then all of a sudden, the financial markets will get a lot more efficient. Um, where was I going? Uh, oh, uh, that there was not going to be. You know my. My dream, I remember a guy was interviewing me and he says, well, what, what, what do you want to do? You know, what, kind of, what kind of life do you want? I say, you know what? I want to be able to buy a Subway sandwich and not worry about it destroying my weekly budget. You know, I want to have an okay car. I want to not worry about rent. You know, that was my dream. And uh, uh, fortunately, the side benefit of all this was forced minimalism, which I've mastered, so that's, that's pretty good. But uh, you know, these were not egregious. I'm gonna make you king. Now I was gonna buy a rental property. I did buy a rental property. I was gonna live in the basement. Oh, another environmental thing. The city of Minneapolis constantly jacking up property taxes. Tripled in seven years I lived in that town, and it just made my once once was a profitable company or a property a non profitable property, and then the housing crisis hit, and the recession hit, and dance class revenue. So that environment going on. Um, but. When you see, not your dreams, but were, what were, by all measures, realistic expectations, even that you're not going to achieve, that is defeating. 
Then when you lose what probably should have been the love of your life, but you were too busy eating, <laughs> trying to find a job, get stable. Why are you gonna get me? Shut up, lady. You know, if, if you wanted to be the stay-at-home wife and give your job to me, then, then I'd have the money. And I could then maybe, but oh no, we gotta compete against men in the workplace. Why can't you find men? Uh, so that was a big, and then just the overall environment. And when you finally realize that some of it's a little more abrupt, some of it's a little more slow cooking, and you realize, oh shit, that was, that, that was the worst part of my life. And that was, I don't know, late 20s, early 30s. And so <clears throat> you, the, I've never, never will, never have, never going to commit suicide. But there was a good, I won't lie, year period where I'm, this is not worth living. This is certainly not worth living. And when you get to that point where you wake up and your favorite part of the day is going to sleep <laughs> and you are cripplingly depressed and there is not, you want me to describe the insanity? The insanity is you're the only sane one. Uh, watch that video, the hardest question I ever had to ask myself was, am I wrong or is society wrong? Because by all statistical likelihood, you're the one that's wrong because society can't be wrong. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Uh, these fucktarded states of America with all these little socialist piggies running around uh, and the brainwashing and all that. Society is probably more wrong than the individual right now. Uh, but you're looking around, and even today, that insanity remains. But at least now I know society is fucked up, and I'm one of the few people that has his head out of his ass. Oh, yeah, sure, clear. Ah, are you the one that's got the house paid off and retiring early? Huh? 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 No? Huh? Uh, do you have the debts? Do you need the bailouts? Ah, uh, shut the fuck up then. Um, so the insane, so you didn't know, like you didn't know why girls are standing up. You didn't know anything about game. You didn't know I had some accidental alpha stuff going on. But just like you guys, when you were, you guys are in your twenties, you know, Cappy was there too. Like what the fuck? And we didn't have all this wisdom on the internet. It was starting to form, but it was like a proto sun. The disc was starting, yeah, we're getting a little heat there, but yeah, we haven't had that fusion reaction yet. So like, there's the star, there's the wisdom. So insanity on all grounds. The despair came from, I busted my ass off. I don't know what else to do. I couldn't have done, I literally could not have done better. There was nothing I could, okay, yeah, I could have joined the military. That had I known, that would have made it a lot easier. Uh, so you just wasted, you know, a quarter of, a quarter century of your life, all of your youth, basically. Um, and then from where to go from there, the confusion, uh, I don't know if I was so confused because I think what crippled me and made me super depressed and in that bad state was realizing the truth and reality. So I wasn't confused. It was just looking at, holy shit, this is society. These are the choices of women I got. Um, I also at that time had a girl lead me on terribly so. That probably was the last girl Cappy fell in love with. Um, and no, it wasn't the ballroom, uh, not the ballroom, the Russian ballet dance, it wasn't her. That one I was already jaded enough to kind of, eh, let's keep you at a distance. Uh, so there was no confusion, but it was just the clear and acute realizing what society was, what was out there, what I'm gonna be capable of doing, not because of my limitations, but by society's limitations. And <clears throat> there was really no reason to get up in the morning, none. And so what did I do? So, and it's not like I sat and I thought about it a lot, uh, but I got up and it was, okay, do you want to kill yourself? No. Are you going to go through life, though, like this for the rest of your days? Fuck no, because it's not going to be worth it. And what made me, a lot of people say, well, how, why not commit suicide if life is so bad? And some people have talked to me about suicide before. And my standard response, which is because it's true, not because it's cookie cutter, but it's true, is what else have you got to do? I mean, you got really nothing else to do. You might as well stay alive. And if, and if your other option is death, well, then all options are on the table. I wouldn't recommend it. You could rob a bank. If you got away with it, boy, I bet you your finance problems would go away real quick. Uh, there's that story of the guy who was going to commit suicide and went on that 
that cocaine party booze heroin trip down in Mexico got a bunch of whores and he came back and said life is okay I mean you know that kind of thing you have all options on the table and so before you kill yourself you might as well try some crazy shit I didn't try crazy shit um, but what got and I did still realize that, that you know there's other things that I can do I didn't know what they were at the time uh, but what kept me going is I am not going to let these fucking assholes in the world, these inferior piece of low IQ scum who think they're better than me and better than you and better than everyone else, who borrow cars, who have their parents' cars back in high school and think they're hot shit, I am not going to give them the satisfaction that Aaron Clary killed himself. And to quote Captain Reynolds, Bendis, you know why we're not going to die? because we're too damn pretty. We're too damn pretty for God to let us die. And that's kind of the approach I took. Uh, <clears throat> I am like, no, fuck you society. Fuck all you piece of shit, parasitic socialists. And not even socialists, just these assholes, these cookie cutter assholes who were thinking popularity was all this and that. And by popularity, I don't just mean middle school and high school, but I mean the assholes at the Carlson School of Management who got to party and put their hats on backwards. The assholes I had to work with that fucking got paid egregious sums of money as executives to run banks into the ground. Uh, the assholes who would, who would borrow more money they could ever hopefully afford to pay back so they could have a boat on Lake Minnetonka, act like they made six figs, ran a business, and we're talking 50 year old guys with gray tufts of hair, wore a fucking medallion, this one douchebag wore a medallion, and they're like, dude, fucking, your name's Sven. His name wasn't Sven, he was Scandinavian. They're like, get that fucking Italian medallion out of your goddamn chest. Um, blowing money on trips to Lake Havasu, uh, luxury car, all those assholes, fuck you. Like, fuck no, you're not gonna, no. I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction. I'm better than you. I'm a more moral, more productive, more honest, more honorable, just outright superior to you in every regard person, and a fuck if I'm gonna leave this planet before you do. And that's what kept me going. Now, that gave me purpose. I think that should give anybody purpose, especially if you are a good, productive individual. If you did do what's right, uh, in addition to, well, what the fuck else you got to do, you might as well not kill yourself because then it truly is game over. So there, there's that philosophy. But that didn't make the pain go away. And so what made the pain go away temporarily is I started getting on workout highs. And I would go run, I think it was 11 miles, not 10, because I remember doing Calhoun, Harriet, and um, Isles with the combination, the connectors, is about 11 miles. Uh, and I'd run that every day, even if my legs it, it didn't care, my legs got, and I dropped down from like 152 to 125. I had no fat, I wish I took pictures. I, I really wish I took pictures. And then I, so I'd go run 11 miles a day, then I'd lift weights for two, because you'd get that high in the morning, and then it would let, and then you'd drop back down into the crippling depression. And then I'd lift weights, and that would, Get, get you the endorphins again, and then, then I go back up high. Uh, by that time, I'd have to teach a dance class. That helped where I taught dance classes. I was engaged with other people, kept my mind off of things. Then inevitably, I would uh, either go to a jazz club or some kind of dance thing <clears throat> after my dance classes, like 9, 30, 10 at night, uh, just to say hi to some people, say hi to some friends. And then I remember I would have sleeping pills in my pocket uh, so that I didn't because sleeping pills take like an hour to really kick in. So an hour before I knew I was going to go to bed or I'd want to sleep, I'd pop a sleeping pill, um, hang out with people a little bit more, get home, and then when i pull in, I wouldn't be awake. I mean, I'd be awake, but I wouldn't stay awake long to ponder and let the demons fucking fight me. I'd immediately go out. And then about a year and a half, two years into it, all of a sudden I woke up one day and I felt fine. I didn't feel bad, nothing was really bothering me. Um, I, you know, I, I had, you know, dance class, I, I didn't starve, I didn't die. Oh, the other thing, <clears throat> um, in addition to working out, what I had started doing is telling more and more people to fuck off. That's another thing, before I get into the recovery part. 
uh, because this is important. But I, st it says I didn't care about anybody. I didn't give a shit what people, I had no respect for society in general. Anytime I caught the slightest bit of shit or guff, I told people to fuck off. I remember kicking a couple on my finance class because the gal was being a great a kuanta ha ha. Um, I, I, just, I just remember not taking any shit. My blog took an even harsher tone. What's funny is my girlfriend said, I like your blog, you're so negative. She should have read it then. <laughs> so I was like, fuck you, fuck man, man. And the reason I bring that up is all of a sudden it's like society starts saying, oh shit, we can't push this one around anymore. Matter of fact, we ought to pay them. And it's weird, guys, it's weird, but you, you'll catch more honeys with, or bees with honeys than you will vinegar. Bullshit. I've never caught so many bees with so much hate filled. It's, it's kerosene. I don't even use vinegar. It's too light. I use kerosene. Uh, and I have found that if you don't lie down or take any bullshit and you get up in people's faces, um, they respect you and you start having more opportunity. At least that was my, my experience. You know, like falling down, or not falling down, uh, Walter White, teacher turned drug dealer, that kind of thing. It was, it was like that. And there's a lot to be said about that. I'm not saying deal drugs or start fighting people, but if your boss gets in your face for some bullshit, you get right back into his. And who gives a shit if you're gonna get fired? So what? I don't feel like living today anyway. You know, that kind of thing. You, you have to really get to that point where you got nothing left to lose. <clears throat> so after a year and a half of that, um, I'm working out and doing, and then another thing I did is I started exploring, that's where I'm like, fuck it, I am sick and tired of saving my money and doing what's right. I'm gonna go to Glacier National Park. I'm gonna explore the West, and that's what I did. Yeah, I was 30, I think, just 30, and, or 31. And because I'm like, I'm not living my life like I have the way I've been told to. I don't care if I really don't have the money or I can't afford to pay off my house just yet. I'm going to go to Glacier National Park. I'm going to go to Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm going to go to the Badlands and the Black Hills. And I'm not going for a day or two. I'm going for fucking weeks at a time and living in my car. And that's what I did. I get a rental car. I took the train out to uh, Glacier National and I rented a, a car and slept in it. Uh, yeah, for like two weeks. The car stank after a while. And so did I. Um, and I started doing shit I wanted to do. I didn't give a shit what people wanted me to do, what society wanted me to do. Because I'm like, I'm packing it in. I did it your way for the first third of my life. All my youth is gone. Fuck you, society. I'm going to do it my way. And you can kind of see that's when the star of Cappy was born. Um, you know, although I was pretty angry before that. But then I was like really angry then. And uh, after a year and a half of that, all of a sudden you realize oh, my dance classes were coming around. The economy was recovering a little bit. I had my first book come out and that was doing good. Um, I think I sold my, yeah, I'd sold my place and got out of the Twin Cities. That was a big thing. Moved out to the WBL. That was a lot nicer um, to where people don't overtly hate uh, white male Republicans or Libertarians. Or your tires don't get slashed or your car broken into and it's your fault. <laughs> get your pretty man. Uh, Oh, and then, then, and I, had, I was dating plenty of girls, but then I started noticing I felt good. And I was doing good. I wasn't doing where I wanted to be, but I was trying to have fun in life. I was finally starting to do what I wanted to do. Um, I had a good group of friends, which tragically have all gone their own separate way now. Uh, but I had a family of friends that were really intelligent, really enjoyable, and I started to see a plan B, which was a forced plan B, wasn't anything I could control. I wasn't gonna get plan A, but it was, here's your, here's your life. I started looking at it, I'm like, this is cool. This is nice. I like these people. I like this. And that's where the, the GF came from, inevitably. And it was not the worst life all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, I was dating a lot of girls and getting laid regularly and, uh, and my finances were all right, and the dance class income was coming in, and the economy was kind of turning around, and my online revenue, and I, I conservatively saved my money, and all that saving and scrimping and living in basements paid off when I moved to my WBL place. And all of a sudden, life was not that bad, and it wasn't an immediate pew, 
rocket up, but it was just this good, solid climb up, gradual incremental improvement, uh, which led to the path that it is today. And I tried different things, you know, as bandwidth got larger, I started doing a podcast, and then I started doing a YouTube channel, and we have Asshole Consulting, and you know, kind of where we are today, I wrote a couple more books. Um, finances got really good, because I was forced into it, you know, I, banks were just completely inept, they're not going to have anyone that really cares about credit or quality control, so I wasn't allowed to be in that, but it forced me to write a book, which then led to my book career, my author career. But basically, it's kind of, and I know this is going to sound lame, but it was time heals all wounds. But what I did to overcome the insanity, despair, and not so much confusion, but probably anger, hatred, and rage, uh, was I worked out like a madman, kept the endorphins up, I didn't drink, uh, and you just suffered through it. And then I, and I inevitably started doing and I didn't, I didn't take shit. I didn't take motherfucking shit from anybody. Boss would get in my face, I'd get right back in his face. Uh, interviews, I told you guys this story many times before, I was drunk. Okay, I was drinking that one day. And this guy, but this is after I kind of recovered. And this guy's like, hey, we'd like to have you come in for a review. I'm like, why are you not a small piss a little community bank and stuff, shit, Craig? Oh, I don't worry, da, da, da. I got like $65 an hour out of him. <laughs> that bank, I, still, I think, still got fucked up. Um, yeah, it's just time not taking shit from anybody, not not tolerating any, any unacceptable behavior, being very direct, forceful, and blunt with people, um, and just time, man, that's all it was, just, just time. And then, uh, it will never get back, and this is an important lesson for all of you guys and gals to know, the happiest I was was my senior semester in college. And the reason I was happiest then was because of false assumptions, false pretenses, uh, erroneous presumptions. I thought the pain was coming to the end. I thought the drudgery and poverty and cold and hunger was coming to an end and that I was finally going to get like, you know, a fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars a year job. Now keep in mind that's in the 90s, so obviously adjust for inflation, significant pay. I would have my house paid off by the time I was 30, and I had a debt, da, 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 da. Um, and I was graduating with no debt. Uh, I, my, the biggest challenge in my life I had completed with perfect marks, nearly straight A's, uh, no debt, six months early, and I, I know it sounds stupid, but I was one of the best guards at the, the campus cop program. I was, I was one of the best. Uh, and uh, had friends and, and, you know, took those for granted, didn't, didn't really think about it. And uh, that was the happiest I was, is because I assumed my future was going to be a certain way. And I was doing everything I should and everybody was telling me in the grades and the confirmation, my money and all that, it was all proving I was doing it right. And I was going to keep going like this. Um, that's the happiest I've been. But it was not a sustainable happiness because it was based on things. It was founded on things that simply weren't true or weren't going to come true. Well, time for the dryer. Oh, I hate these new modern dryers. Yes, I know. I think it's like a nag machine. They all had women program these. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buzz eight times so he knows I'm done. Um... You got to realize that too. Pretty much all of you listening right now, basically Gen X and younger, because you were all lied to about what life was going to be like. You were all misled to have unrealistic expectations, which uh, even with the most sane of minds, weren't that unrealistic. Like, well, I got straight A's. Why can't I go make and start at 60,000 a year? What, what's wrong with that? I thought I did really well. Um, is that your happiness and even happiness is too optimistic of a world. Your life satisfaction has to be derived from the real world and what the real world's gonna allow you to do. And you are forever gonna look back in the past and say, damn, do you remember my senior year in high school or my senior year in college? I was happiest then. Well, that's because you had delusional expectations. That's because your expectations were not going to manifest themselves in the real world. And if you can stop trying to get back to that point in time, because you can't, you can't lie to yourself like that again, 
and accept what is out there in the real world, what is going to happen, what the benefits are, that's about as not as happy. Again, I don't know if happiness is a thing. It's truly elusive. But I think that's what you can hope most for in terms of contentment, serenity, and peace. Um, mere satisfaction with life. Not happy, happy, happy. Because again, I don't think that's possible. And so, uh, and also, understand there will never be an instance where there are no problems outside of your control. There will always be a problem. Like right now, life could not be going any better except in the most important thing, and, and that is he, other, other humans. Like in my life, yes, I have the GF and I have some friends, but it's nothing. This is some of you young 20-somethings better appreciate. It's nothing like what you got in your young 20s, nothing. And you better appreciate those people you got because they're gonna they're, they're gonna get they're gonna get families they're gonna get kids they're gonna move out you're gonna have that that guy who never got laid he finally gets a girlfriend and he abandons you because he's getting pussy and then when she dumps his ass because he's too clingy he'll come back sheepishly a year and a half later hey guys what's going on like what the fuck have you been I will, if in case he's listening, yes, I'm talking to you, my Asian engineering friend. Bastard. <laughs> but at least he came back. What's really, and it will happen, guys. It's going to happen. You're going to be in your 30s and your 40s, and you will have friends who literally live two miles away and will be too damn tired to go out and do anything. And uh, maybe you got kids by that time, in which case you won't have to worry about these problems because you'll be too busy getting sick and changing diapers uh, and running around with your head cut off. Uh, but for those of you, even when you have your kids that left the home, of which I have several friends whose kids are old enough, they've left the home, they don't go out. It's over. It's game over. And so that's another thing where it's like, oh, didn't see that coming. But everything else is great in life. And you will face something similar too. It will not be, and if I had to put money on it, and it's kind of interesting if you look at suicide rates. Suicide rates for men anyway, I didn't look at women, kind of there's an initial spike at 24, then it goes back down. I think that's when, I think we're going to see more of that. And again, I think every man and woman is going to go through this, is where you, that's where you hit the real world and realize, even if you did everything right, it was all lies and bullshit. And some people just can't handle it and they bump themselves off and then it goes back down as you kind of adapt to the new normal. Then I think it spikes up again in like the mid to late 40s for guys. I think it's because we're getting divorced um, or just tired of this shit. <laughs> I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> no, I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. I am. <laughs> well, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, lucky bastard, damn it. Um, also, and then I think there's a, maybe a third spot, or maybe it's just a general increase up into the 70s and 80s where men are bumping themselves off because uh, they have terminally ill diseases um, and they don't want to suffer through the pain. Um, but every young person out there, you are going to go through this introduction to the real world, this rude awakening where all the lies are going to, well, they'll be exposed, but depending on how thorough and intense your brainwashing was, you may or may not accept that or realize that that's what the world is telling you. I mean, this is where girls will then go and, well, I just don't have enough education in communications. I'm going to get my master's in communications. Like, well, okay, lady, you didn't, you didn't pay attention. <clears throat> uh, so if you can get over that hurdle and even now know that that lie or those lies and that point in time is coming, uh, and especially you boys out there, if you got a nice, sweet girl who doesn't drive you too much up the fucking wall. Because they're all going to drive you up the wall, dude. They're all going to... Maybe you lock her down. right? Maybe You don't have to get married. But maybe you commit... Um, you know, you'll know. If you're not arguing with the girl, it's kind of a good sign. Uh, and they're not, they're not... That's another thing, guys. Stop looking... Forget perfect. Stop looking for excellent. Stop looking for very good. Just, just look for good. <laughs> so, She's in shape. She's nice. She shows up on time and she doesn't yell or nag me. And even that, you're not going to get that. Uh, but the point in time is coming, if you haven't already hit it there yet, or maybe you're in the middle of it, that, yeah, uh, you your expectations of what your life was going to be like uh, on every major and minor facet and, and uh, category will be demonstrably lessened by the real world and then you got to look at this and say oh shit 
that's what my life is going to be like. And then, uh, and then you adapt. And you'd be surprised that once you adapt, other opportunities open up. I mean, I'm a little bit of a firebrand. I just accepted that. And now all of a sudden I have asshole consulting and I have a very good life. Uh, I get to work from home and podcasting, things like that. Um, now this doesn't mean that like you submit yourself to Corporate America, Inc. And, okay, I'll get my MBA and go more into debt and do whatever you say. I mean, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but you do have to kind of go with the flow because the sooner you stop fighting the flow and go with it, then you're actually going to make progress in the real. The, the real world is the flow. You either go with it or not. And the sooner you go with it, although in my special way I went with it, but then still told the flow to fuck off, and then I caught some big fish. Um, once you start making decisions based in the real world, then you'll start to have more and more success. Um, but there will come moments in your life, times, you know, epochs, epochs, eras in your life where it's out of your control and just things are not going to be going the way, you know, the economy goes to shit. Your friends will leave. They will leave. They will go away. Uh, and you better have like a really tight group of friends. I mean, I hope, again, this is why I recommend you join the military. If anything, for the camaraderie and shit, stay in until, you, until they kick you out. I mean, if you can make general by the age of 60, do it. <laughs> because then, uh, it, it's just, I mean, at least you got people around you. Um, you know, join the reserve police force in your, in your neighborhood if you're staying in one place. Uh, something, something to get that group of people together. Uh, but, uh, yeah, don't think that once you get over that main hurdle, it's going to be easy sailing from there. It's not. It's, there's going to be other demons you get to wrestle with. And by demons, I mean shit that's outside of your control. You know, you can always give up drinking. You can always give up pot. You can always give up drugs. You can give up bad eating. You can give up uh, uh, not working out. You can give up porn addiction. You can, those are all things under your control. But mark my words, when you get down the road, once you adapt to the real world, down the road, there are still going to be challenges. There are still going to be um hurdles and they're going to be outside of your control it's not going to be as bad as what you endured in your early to mid to 20s to 30s but they are going to be challenges and and just pushing through it and because you got nothing better to do man nothing better to do so there you go i'm glad and on that happy note let's plug my shit worthless young person's indispensable guide to choosing the right major that will save you a lot of pain and agony down the road you will only have to go to school once uh, Reconnaissance Man, I recommend reading that book so you know where to go to school, not just, oh, I like going to this school, this guy. Go to where it's warm. Curse of the High IQ, that's for anybody listening. Uh, especially if you're asking questions like this about suicide and the meaning of life and how to be happy, this is a must. You are probably a genius without knowing it, and you need to read that book. And then my flagship product, Bachelor Pad Economics, get that book, because if you read that, that will one say, dude, if you solve your finances, if you solve your finances, you don't major in stupid shit, you don't go into debt, a lot of this goes away. A lot. Of it. There's still going to be problems, but a lot of it goes away. And for less than a hundred bucks, if you want to buy all my books, I'm pretty sure you will get that knowledge. All right. Links to everything down below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.